ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبت منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار All praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal. First and foremost, He is the one that deserves the utmost praise. It is Him alone that we seek for help. And it is Him alone that we ask for His forgiveness. Whoever Allah Azza wa Jal has guided to the straight path, then none can misguide them. And whoever Allah Azza wa Jal allows to go astray, then none can bring them to guidance. I testify on this beloved day of Jumu'ah that there is nothing absolutely worthy of worship except Allah Azza wa Jal. Nothing has a right to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify at the same time, along with that, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah's servant and his messenger. After him, alayhi salatu was salam, there are no more prophets. There are no more messengers. There is no more guidance. There is no more wahi or revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal until Yawmul Qiyamah. And whoever thinks that they soon will be guided by other than the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are sadly mistaken, and they are on clear error, and they have no sultan or authority from Allah azza wa jal. From the guidance of all the messengers, all of the anbiya and the rusul, from the sunan, from the way of the prophets and messengers, all of them, alayhim salatu wa salam, is that institution of Nikah, that institution of Zawaj, Bain al Rijal wa Bain al Nisa, between the man and the woman, that institution of marriage, Nikah, which is from above the seven heavens, Mashroor, Hukum, from Allah Azza wa Jal, not something that is from man, it is something from the beginning of time. Allah wa ta'ala legislated it for mankind, for the sons of Adam, for the daughters of Adam. Az-Zawaj, Nikah, that institution of marriage, which is one of the most emphasized sunan practices of the messengers as Allah Azza wa Jal yaqul, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْ قَبَلِكْ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيًّا and we have sent before you, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu was salam, messengers before you, and we have made for them mates or wives and gave them offspring or children. 
We know from our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the three men, three men came, as reported by Anas radiallahu anhu, when the three men, men came inquiring about the worship or the ibadah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and one of them said, I will not sleep, I will pray all night. And the other one said, such and such. And the other one said, I will never marry women, and I will stay like that my whole entire life. When your beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard about that, he said, as for me, I do such and such. I pray and I sleep. And he said, as for me, alayhi salatu wa salam, I marry women. As for me, I marry women. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so whoever goes away from my sunnah, then they have nothing to do with me. And we know the blessings. We know the barakah. The blessings of the zawaj. The blessings of getting married. Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept any other way. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wa huwa ya'lam ala ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa al-latif al-khabir wa huwa ya'lam and he knows what is best for his creation. He knows what is best for you. He knows what is best for us. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala does not accept any other way, between the men and the women, male and female, Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept any other way. One of those, according to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, most deserving of the help of Allah Azza wa Jal, like the Mujahid fi Sabilillah, like the one who goes to fight for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, fi Sabilillah. From those also, the one who deserves most the help of Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who wants to marry, to preserve himself, to protect himself. <coughs> we know the ayat from the glorious book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Many, Allah Azza wa Jal telling us the situation of those. What will they get? What are they promised? وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا and whoever has taqwa of Allah, whoever fears Allah, then Allah will make a way out for them. وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And whoever puts their reliance or their trust in Allah, then that is enough for them. And they will be provided for rizq from Allah, from means that they don't even realize. So we know about these ayat. We know about these a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even if you do things the right way, what is that right way? That is the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The guidance of the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Min Allah azza wa jal. Min fawqit sab'a samawat. From above the seven heavens. Tashri'a. Hukum. Ahkam from Allah Azza wa Jal. That is the right way. Staying within the boundaries that Allah Azza wa Jal has set. Not going outside the hudud that Allah Azza wa Jal warned you about going outside. So even if we do things the right way, staying within the boundaries set by Allah, then Allah Azza wa Jal will guide you in all your affairs. He will correct your matters. He will make your matters right. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ He will make your matters right if you do things the right way. And you give thanks. After all of that, you do your part. You make your tawakkul على Allah. You put your trust in Allah, your reliance in Allah. And you do things the way they're supposed to be done. And you have shukr. You have thanks, thankfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who provides, wa huwa khayrul waziqeen, and he is the best of providers. You give thanks. What did he say? Wala in shakartum la azidannakum. And if you give thanks to him, tabaraka wa taala, wa huwa akramul akramin, 
and he will give you extra and more than that in this dunya and in the akhirah. But what happens, ya ibad Allah? Ayyuhal Mubarakun, what happens? Many start on the right way. Many of people start on the right way with good intentions, with the good niyyah, with ikhlas, wanting to follow the sunnah. But then what happens? Compromise. They start to waver. They start to sway in the wind. They start to become like the waves on the ocean, just going this way and that way. They start to be influenced by their desires, by the whispers of the people. Shayateen al-ins wal jinn. They start to waver, compromise, weakness, pressure from even family members. People who are not even directly responsible or have any say in the matter of zawaj, of nikah, of walima. People who are not even involved and they start to make things difficult. They start to put pressure on a young man. They start to put pressure on a young woman until things they fall apart. You know from the husn al-Islam or from the goodness of one's Islam is that he leaves that which does not involve him. From the goodness of one's Islam, from the goodness of one's Islam is that he leaves alone that which doesn't concern him. It's not his business. It's not her business. They leave that. That's from Islam. That's from the adab of Islam. So then what happens? Things, they start to fall apart before the marriage is even sealed. There's no aqid yet. And things already fell apart. Or the man is put under emotional and financial stress. The woman, the young girl, imagine, she is put under emotional stress. She wishes she never even said yes in the first place. She wishes that she never agreed to it in the first place. She wishes that, wishes that she could go hide underneath a rock. And the man or the boy, the young man, wishes that he could be left all alone until he changes his mind, until he turns away in distress, with anxiety, with frustration, until he starts to visit now the parlors of the night spots and the places of ill repute and the places of fahisha and he makes that his answer now, his place. May Allah save us from any, any of that. The pressure for the man, for the woman, for the young girl until things they fall apart and the stress and the anxiety and the cutting off of ties of relationship all because of planning for a walima planning for a zawaj and so on and people getting involved where they should not be where they should not be placing their business so some they go away from the guidance which they are expected to follow it is mashru'a it is tahkim it is from Allah Azza wa Jal. The people, mankind, the sons of Adam, the Muslimun, the Mu'minun, those that believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, and the last day. They believe in Muhammad Rasulullah. They are expected to follow that guidance. But they start to go away from that. They think that the matter of marriage, the matter of divorce, is not something related to Al-Islam. They think that all is fine and good when you step into the masjid. But otherwise in my house or in the community or in my, in my family, this is something else. Leave me, leave me to my business. And that is no way to start a marriage. That is no way to start a nikah or a blessed thing which Allah Azza wa Jal has given you guidelines and promises you that it will be blessed if you follow the guidance. So it is no way to start. Imagine the one who goes with the good intention. He makes the Salatul Istikhara. He makes that Salat, Mashru' from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sunnah. When you want to seek guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal, 
you pray those two rak'ah of prayer and you say that dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh Allah, if this thing, this matter is good for my life, for my living, for my deen, then help me with it. Allow it for me. Bring me closer to it. And if, O oh Allah, it is something which is harmful to my life, to my living, to my deen, then distance me from it. You, they have those intentions. They do the sunan of the Prophet ﷺ. But then things, they creep in along the way and the people start to waver. And then you expect after that, when you let the munkar, the muharramat, into this matter, you expect it to be blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal. What are we speaking about today? Those things which are munkar, those things which have no sultan or authority from Allah Azza wa Jal, not from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are not mashru'a. They are not allowable to be involved in a celebration of a marriage, in a walima in a celebration of a nikah, which is legislated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What are those things that some of the people have taken to do until they become like adat, until they become like custom and tradition? You have to do it. You cannot have a wedding unless you do this, such and such. And there's a big fight and marriages don't even get started because of the reason of these things. From those things, first and foremost, very serious, al-dukhul ala nisa This is from the munkarat at these celebrations of weddings that the people have taken to. Some have, like I said, even taken as a custom. A Muslim wedding, they say. A Muslim wedding where the women are all together with the men and everyone sits with each other and everyone looks at each other and he looks at her, his wife and she looks at her husband and so on so. Like we have a certain adab or like we have certain manners for the masjid or for the Qur'an, or this is from the Qur'an, but this is now a wedding celebration. It's something separate. La wallah. This is from the deen of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is something again, mashru'a, indallahi azza wa jal. These people that take part in that, these people who organize that, and they're Muslim. We're not saying that they're not Muslim. But they are Muslim, but they're organizing these types of wedding celebrations. It's an evidence of qillatul iman, of qillatul haya, of ba'af al yaqeen, of a, a, a diminishing of the iman, of the diminishing of the haya, of the little haya that a lot of people are taking to these days. <coughs> Modesty having shyness, having modesty, having jealousy, ghira, towards their women folk, their wives, their sisters, their daughters, having that ghira, that is mashru'a, that is natural, that is supposed to be there, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for his wives, had for his daughters, that the Muslims have for their mothers, for their daughters, for their wives. This ghira, this jealousy, that you don't want another strange man looking at them with desire, with passion, with lust, looking towards them, looking at them like that. How is it, ya ibadallah? How is it, ayyuhal muslimun? Even we know the ayat, we know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Aisha, about the blind man. He cannot see us, Ya Rasulullah. But you can see him. And if you ask them, if you ask them, فَاسْأَلُهُنْ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابِ If you ask the women, ask them from behind the hijab. 
This hijab in Islam, this institution, not a piece of clothing, not a scarf, but a barrier where the men do not see the women, where the women do not see the men. It is better for you. Aisha radiallahu anha saying, advising from the Bayt al nubuwa from the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not being, not seeing the men. It is better for women if they do not see men, and it is better for men if they do not see women. What did he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Iyakum, in Arabic language. How do we translate it? Iyakum, beware, or watch out, or on you, make sure. Iyakum, what dukhul ala nisa? He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Beware about entering onto, upon the women. Those that are not your mahadam, those that are not allowable for you to be with alone or to be mixing with, to see them. Ya Rasulullah, they asked him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about a certain situation. Atara'ayti, ya Rasulullah, alhamu. What about the brother-in-law, ya Rasulullah, the brother of the zawj, the brother of the husband? Many of the Muslims you see today, they're okay, they're all right. The ghira doesn't have an effect on them and they're all right with their wife embracing his brother. They're okay with his brother kissing his wife on the cheek or whatever. They're all right with it. What did he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about that brother-in-law? الحمو قال صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمو الموت it is death it is that serious and this hadith is متفق عليه what is that from Imam al Bukhari wa Imam Muslim authentic from those munkarat from those celebrations of the wedding parties is the taswir putting aside what you may know or what the ulama, the scholars have talked about or debated about whether photography from a camera or a video camera is the same as the portrait making, the paintings that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned about that they will be asked or they will be told on Yawm Al-Qiyamah Qila Lahu bring to life your creation on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, those that used to paint the pictures, they will be told on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, bring to life what you created. Do you think that they will be able to do so? This will be punishment for them. It is haram, taswir. So again, not the place now to talk about the debate and the argument, but what you feel comfortable with. But remember now, think about this, the picture taking the video taking of the afrah, of the wedding party, of the celebration of the wedding party, of the women's part. Where is it gonna end up? Where is it gonna go after that? Where is it gonna go that very second with the iPhones, with the phones, the cell phones, the video of the party where the women are dancing and the women are on and on, not dressed according to the way they should be dressed. And with a click of a button, it is on YouTube. It is on Facebook. It is all over the net for billions of eyes to see. Until there is the gathering of the, of the men who got a hold of a video of the women's wedding party. And they are gathered with their drinks. And they are watching. And the one says, how about her? Wow, look at her. And the man standing next to him, his friend, says, that's my wife. What about this? Getting into the wrong hands, going to the wrong places. Did the people think about that? This adat, or this custom of, where it came from, Allah knows best. Where the man who is going to marry this girl, and they put the two of them on these big giant chairs, in front of the women, to stand or to sit in front of the women. And he's seen all the females, all of these women that are not mahadim for him. 
and he's looking at them and they're looking at him and he gets to see all of them and this is from the celebrations of the weddings this is from the celebrations of the nikah and you want blessings from Allah Azza wa Jal Baraka min Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala after that istikhdam al mughanniyin wal mughanniyat where they bring the singers even they bring in the music in a lot of the Arab countries even the Muslim countries bring in the singers and we know the ayat we know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ومن الناس من يشتري له الحديث from the people from mankind Allah Azza wa Jal يقول from mankind are those that buy or they spend they spend on leading the people astray off the sabil, off the path of Allah Azza wa Jal by bringing the musicians, the singers, the female singers. And there will be a people from the, from the end times, your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warning about that they will make musical instruments halal. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will make musical instruments and fahisha, zina, they will make it halal. What's the asl? What's the tah what's the the hukam of zina? Haram. And they will make musical instruments halal, meaning that it is haram. And the people are bringing this into their afrah, into their wedding party, their celebration, because they think they have to. They're pressured into it. They have to have it. It's part of our adat. It's part of our custom. It's part of our tradition. You cannot have a wedding without it. And it's going to be like a janazah if you don't have it. اتقوا الله يا عباد الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Imam Malik, so many of the Muslims, they brag and they boast and they argue with you and they fight about this is my madhab. They argue with you that this is the madhab of Imam Malik and you can't tell me nothing and so on. And they argue with you. But then when it comes to the things, the likeness of Imam Malik calling anybody that listens to music, that plays that music, that goes and takes part in that majlis or that place, that afrah, where the music is, fusaq. They are fasiqun. They are evildoers. They are rebellious against Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the Imam Malik, the Imam of Darul Hijrah, alayhi rahmatullah. Imam Shafi'i, Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi'i. Many of you follow him, his madhab. And you argue when it comes to, let's say, matters of fiqh, wiping the socks and eating camel meat, does it break the wudu and so on. But then when it comes to music, you turn a blind eye. He said, alayhi rahmatullah, Imam al-Shafi'i. They are fussaq, the same thing, the likeness of Imam Malik. They are fussaq. They are evil doers, they are rebellious against Allah Azza wa Jal. Those that sing, those that play the instruments, those that go there and sit there and listen to it and take part in it. <laughs> what did he say? Rahimahullah, Imam Shafi'i, wa mardud al shahada. In the court of law, in the mahkam, in the mahkama. Their witness, their testimony is rejected. They will not be accepted as a witness. Those that take part, those that listen, those that play and sing the music. <laughs> From those things that are munkar of these wedding celebrations. The israf that goes on. The waste that goes on. From the food. From the extravagance. Allah Azza wa Jal yaqul. في كتابه العظيم يا بني آدم خذوا زينتكم عند كل مسجد وكلوا واشربوا ولا تسرفوا إنه لا يحب المسرفين 
eat and drink whatever you please. Eat and drink. Wear your best adornment to the masajid of Allah. And don't be wasteful. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Verily he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not love those that are wasteful. They have to have the castle for 3,000 people for their wedding party. They have to spend $40,000 on a wedding. And the man does not have that money. And he has to borrow money with maybe riba involved. $40,000 to spend on a walima, on a wedding party, and so on. Putting himself in financial distress, putting emotional stress on him. It's a wonder whether they don't, how they don't have, illa min rahim Allah, only by the rahmah of Allah, that a lot of them don't have a heart attack. Aqulu ma tasma'un, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. ولجميع المسلمين من كل دم فاستغفروه وتوبوا إليه إنه هو التواب الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين First and foremost, we send peace and blessings and salutations upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We testify that there is nothing absolutely worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah's servant and his messenger. If you want Allah Azza wa Jal to help you along the way to rectify your affairs, to straighten out your matters and your affairs, then you must do things according to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet I have left with you two things. He said, alayhi afdalu salati wa salam. If you grasp onto them, he's promising you wa'ad minhu, minhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa huwa min indillahi azza wa jal. And it is also a promise Guaranteed from Allah Azza wa Jal. Because Him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said it, He guaranteed it for you from Allah Azza wa Jal. That if you grasp onto those two things, you will never ever go astray. And that is the book of Allah and my Sunnah, He said, Alayhi Salatu wa Salam. So if you want things to go the right way, you have to stay within the boundaries set by Allah Azza wa Jal. The hudud, the book of Allah, and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, by his tawfiq, by his guidance, the guidance from him, then Allah Azza wa Jal will rectify your, your affairs, will make your matters correct, will make your matters right. And you show shukr, you show thankfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal, no matter how things turn out. And Allah Azza wa Jal will make a way out for you from every matter, every hardship. After hardship, there will come ease. And you will get barakah, you will get blessing, you will get rizq from Allah Azza wa Jal. You will get barakah, and you will get rahmah and forgiveness in this life. And Yawm al Qiyamah in the Akhirah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide all the Muslims who have gone astray. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive all the Muslims wherever they are. Those upon La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give quick relief to our brothers and our sisters in Syria that are under the oppression of that tyrant, that Tawut. Bashar al-Asad. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give victory to the Muslims in Syria, those upon La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Allahumma izza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin, wa adil al-Shirk wa al-Mushrikin, wa al-Kufr wa al-Kafirin, ya Rabb al-Alameen. Rabbana zalamna anfusana, wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna, lanagunanna min al-Khasirin. Rabbana ghfir lana dhunubana, wa israfana fi amrina, wa thabbit aqadamana, wa ansurna ala al-Qawm al-Kafirin. Rabbana aatina fi al-Dunya hasana, wa fi al-Akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al-Nar. 
اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك نبينا محمد أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر